Hello and welcome to Football Fitness Federation's guide to basic match preparation from a nutritional perspective. My name's Alan Mockford and I'm going to be taking you through this presentation. I'm going to be giving you some insight into the strategies that I've used previously with great success with players that I've worked with. Okay, there's a little bit of background information about myself. This presentation was one that I originally delivered up at the RTC in Nottingham for players and parents to give them an understanding of how best to prepare for games and you know the strategy that they should be using. So sports nutrition, it's a real easy concept, isn't it? You know, you've got the old analogy of a car and you know putting fuel in the tank if you want to get from A to B. The car being the player or the athlete and the fuel being food. If you've got a specific journey that's say 100 miles long, but you only put fuel in for 50 miles, then obviously your car is going to break down and you're not going to have enough fuel to complete the journey. Same with sports nutrition or with uh, you know match day nutrition. If you haven't got the energy on board, then you're not going to be able to compete at the highest levels possible for the full 90 minutes um, and yeah it's really that simple isn't it if only it was that simple there's a little bit more to it than that which hopefully by the end of this presentation you will uh, recognize and understand so in order to uh, make things a little bit more clearer it's necessary for us to visit the first principle that uh, we're going to look at now which is fuel for football so this leaves us to pose the question what is the optimum fuel for football from a nutritional perspective well if we take a look at what the professional players are eating it could potentially be a bag of crisps or it could be a meal replacement shake or equally it could be a bucket of fried chicken with maybe some chicken dippers in there might be a, a kind of soft drink kind of pepsi or coke or any other type of soft drink or it might well be uh, a pie that um, you know is available from all good football grounds and uh, kiosks if we're looking at what the professional players are eating and advertising, which actually has a big influence on the uh, younger generation especially, then the message isn't clear at all. And in fact, these types of foods are nutritionally empty and they are not the types of food that I would recommend any players to take on board in, in order to prepare for, for games and matches. There he is, there he is, old Maradona. Um, yeah, I've used this just to highlight the fact that, you know, if we're being bombarded by these messages, then it's it's so difficult for uh, your average pl player or your parents to really understand exactly what they need to take on board or what exactly the fuel for football is, especially when there's uh, so much money at stake in terms of selling products. So uh, I'm going to take you through exactly what you need to know uh, in terms of the fuel or the specific substrates that you need for football performance. So carbohydrate uh, is the primary source of fuel for football. Um, carbohydrate in the form of glycogen, uh, which is a glucose basically or more precisely a multi-branch polysaccharide of glucose that forms as uh, energy for us earthlings it's stored in various sites around the body uh, in different amounts and it's enough to see us through a 90 minute game if we've got our